Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel. Thank you very much for watching. Um, so today what we're going to be talking about is um, actually working with something that I really enjoy using and I use it a ton. And I use it for work and I use it actually just kind of when I'm doing anything really. And that's something called Vim. And the reason I say you can use it for anything is because there's actually a Chrome extension that you can get so you can have Vim controls inside of Chrome, which is super cool. So you can use these things when you are coding. You can also use them when you're just serving the web. So it's it's super neat, very versatile. When you learn the controls, you can really learn it and you can use it anywhere, which is super neat. So I'm gonna be going over a lot of that stuff. And so the whole idea behind Vim is that you never move away from your keyboard. So you'll never use your mouse. Everything you do is with your keyboard, which is super cool because it saves you a lot of time. You'll find that you'll be a lot more productive and it's just, it's really fun to do it that way. It's actually not super complicated to learn. You can get really in depth with it and you can find some controls that are like super complicated if you want to and if you need that. But I've found that for what I do, it, I don't have to get super complicated with it yet. I have branched out and I've installed some really interesting plugins, um, but I've actually found things that are simple and you can install them in tools that you already use. So if you like VS Code, which I love using VS Code for what I do, you can use Vim, there's a Vim extension for VS Code. So I'm gonna talk about that a little bit today as well, but I'm also gonna be talking about Vim in your terminal and just opening a Vim window and doing stuff with that. So we're gonna talk about like using like a file explorer-ish type thing <laughs> um, that's called NerdTree. We're gonna talk about some other really neat um, Vim extensions and plugins and all that kind of stuff. So I am also using the Moonlander keyboard. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the shortcuts that I've set up with the Moonlander keyboard. Not a ton of stuff right now because I've only been using it for maybe like three weeks. So I don't have a ton of keyboard shortcuts set up right now, but there are a few things that I can show you currently that I already have set up and maybe later on down the road, maybe a month or two months down the road, I'll, I'll show you a little bit more. I'm sure my setup is gonna change between now and then. So for now, we'll just get into some of the Moonlander and Oryx software keys that you can do some really neat stuff with. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about the functionality that is really Moonlander centric, but we're also going to talk about just a ton of Vim stuff. So it's really just, it's a Vim video with a little bit of Moonlander keyboard stuff thrown in because I have gotten some requests about that in the comments. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in. I hope you enjoy. All right, so what I have here is actually VS Code running Vim, and this is a Vim extension. So I figured I would show you this before we walk into um, Vim in the terminal. There are a lot of similarities, and I think VS Code is familiar enough to people that this won't seem strange and that this will be um, an easy way to kind of get people used to uh, the Vim controls. So before I go any further, um, I do want to mention that this is not really a Vim tutorial. What this is, is kind of a demonstration of some of the things that I use Vim for. So um, definitely don't expect it to kind of walk you through like all the basics of Vim, but I will be showing you some of the things that you can do with Vim for sure. Okay, so I've just turned on a program that will let you see um, the key presses that I have here. So you can see down in the lower corner of the screen, uh, those are the keys that I'm pressing. So might get a little annoying, but hopefully this will kind of show you what I am doing key-wise. Okay, so um, to start off, I mean, obviously you'll use the H, J, K, and L keys to navigate around, so you're not using your mouse cursor at all for anything. Um, also, another thing you'll notice, obviously, there is insert mode, which you'll enter by pressing I, and you can see down here, VS Code will tell you what mode you're in, which is super cool. So there's insert mode, you press escape, or I have it mapped to JK, which I've seen a lot of people do, um, and it kind of helps you, you know, it's right in the home row, so instead of reaching for escape, you can just map it to that. Um, so you can look up how to map settings in VS Code Vim uh, online, and hopefully you'll find some information there. The files you're seeing me edit are from a different series that I have on YouTube, which is my Learning Haskell series. So currently at the time of making this video, I'm on day three. I'll probably be putting up more videos. So the code you're seeing is concurrent with the day three video. So I'll have that linked in the description in case you're curious about Haskell code or anything like that. 
So um, yeah, so moving around, you can do that. You can also move down several lines by typing in the number of lines you want to move down. So maybe, I don't know, five, number five, and then J. Now I've moved down five lines and you can continue to do that. Five and J, five and J all the way down. Something that's really cool that, I'm, that I've found is in VS Code Vim, you can use something called Vim Easy Motion. And it's actually built in to Vim in VS Code. One thing you'll have to make sure is that if you use this in regular Vim, you'll need to install that plugin. So uh, Vim Easy Motion is super cool to use. Um, what you can do is double click the space bar, space, and then you can do uh, J or K. And you'll notice we get a whole bunch of letters up here. So I did space, space, K, and so that's actually going up. And so now I can navigate to any of those lines by pressing the K. So if I wanted to go to this line here, line six, I could press Z, and there we go. So easy motion moves me to the line I want to go to. I can also do space, space, W, and that stands for word, at least that's how I remember it. And so now what I can do is I can jump to a word. So if I wanted to jump down to this word in particular, I could type F, Y, and there we go. I'm now on this word, which is super cool. So again, that's space, space, W, for Word, and that does everything below. Um, you'll probably have to be at the top of your top of the file. I'm sure there's another shortcut, but I haven't really had to do that. Usually it's below me, or I can do space, space, K, which is up, and then go up to the line where I wanna go. So what I just demonstrated was Vim Easy Motion, and so that's actually in VS Code Vim, the extension in VS Code for Vim by default. But if you are using a regular version of Vim in the terminal, you'll have to make sure that you install that plugin. So we can navigate. You'll notice I have like a dual pane set up here. And I can talk about how I do this with my Moonlander, which actually makes this easy in a second. But first of all, um, let's just talk about navigating this right now. So what you'll do is you can actually move over by doing uh, command, shift, and then the hard bracket. So you'll actually get the curly bracket. So command curly bracket right and command curly bracket left. You can move back and forth between these two windows, which is super cool. You can go to the top of the file by double clicking G. Now you're at the top. You can move to the bottom of the file by holding shift G. So uppercase G moves you to the bottom. One super neat thing, and this is actually really cool, and this is part of what I like about the using the Moonlander keyboard is you can map certain keys so that when you hold down the key, it gives you a different key press than if you were to just press the key once. So I have my slash key, which is right under my pinky, and I can hold that down and it's actually mapped to control. So in this version of Vim, and actually in all versions of Vim, you can do control U to move up multiple lines and kind of scroll through the file. And you can do control D to move down the file and move like that. So um, using those two methods of control, you can kind of get to where you want to go pretty quickly. Sometimes I'll use, I'll use this when I really just want to get a high level overview of the file and just kind of be like, huh, what's in this file, right? What does the structure of my code look like? I can scroll through it that way. So this is some really neat things. And um, a lot of those, some of them are built in directly to VS Code. Uh, one thing that I did want to show, and actually a couple of other things, but the, the first thing is Word. So you can do W to move across to the very next word, and you can use B to go back a word. So that's cool. Okay, so this is a JavaScript file, and I kind of wanted to show you um, something really neat that you can do with JS files. So um, in a JS file and a lot of other things, just apparently not Haskell files, you can do Command KI, and that'll actually open up this um, menu that you get when you hover over something. So that'll give you some more information about what it is you're hovering over. So in the case of this 404 page, I can go to the component I wanna look at, I can do Command KI, and you can see it opens up um, the type definition. Same thing that I would do if I were hovering over this with my mouse, which is super cool. So we talked about some of the VS Code Vim features with the Vim plugin in VS Code, and I know I said it wasn't really gonna be a tutorial, but we actually ended up going into a little bit more detail with that. So 
Now you're maybe a little bit more familiar with Vim, so that's pretty cool. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna move into the terminal, and this is actually the version of Vim that most people use, which is Vim directly in their terminal. Although, I will say that recently, the VS Code extension, the Vim extension in VS Code has been gaining popularity, so a lot of people are kind of switching over to that sort of augmented VS Code view, where they have the really cool GUI, and the, like you saw the, the pop-ups from VS Code about the types and all that kind of stuff. You have that and you also have the functionality that Vim gives you, which is you don't have to use your mouse. You can use your keyboard for everything. So we're gonna now move into the terminal and talk about some of the things that I have in terminal. And then we're gonna talk about some of the Moonlander things that I have in general and how they also apply to Vim. So what you're seeing here is the exact same file that we had open in VS Code, but this is actually in my terminal. So how did we get to this point? Let me just walk you through briefly how I did that. So you can actually, once you've installed Vim, you can from terminal literally type Vim and it's gonna open a window like this. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna say Vim learning Haskell Learning Project. And so that's gonna open this. What you're seeing here, and as it says up here, this is NerdTree. This is a plugin that I have installed. I'm not gonna really gonna go in depth with that, but what I use it is, I use it as a file visualization method so I can actually see what files I have and what folders. So you can move up directories, you can do all that really cool stuff. So what I've done is I've opened that up and I've clicked into a file by literally moving and hitting enter on the file I wanna move into. Now you can move between windows. I have this set up in my VimRC and I might make that available a little bit later in a different video, uh, but my VimRC is set up so that I can do um, space, which is actually mapped to my leader key, space, two W's in a row, and that moves me over, toggles me between the window that I'm in and the window that I'm moving to. So, um, so what we have here, a lot of the same sort of things, a lot of the same controls that we already talked about in VS Code Vim. Um, so again, you can do the control U to move up. You can do control D to move down. I don't partic I don't have um, the Vim Easy Motion installed in the terminal version of Vim just because I don't use the terminal version as much as I use the VS Code version of Vim. So this is really cool and it's nifty, especially if you are writing server code and you're remote, you're remote accessing the server. So it's, you know, you don't actually have a desktop GUI. So using VS Code or a text editor like that isn't really an option. So Vim works really well. It comes installed on most Linux versions right out of the box. Vim is already there. So it really makes it easy. Um, don't get too used to your VimRC because VimRC doesn't come with you. So um, some of the things like the syntax highlighting you're seeing here, they're not available in uh, need a Vim right out of the box. So you'll need to bring your Vim RC file with you to get access to that. So what we're gonna talk about next is actually using the Oryx software for the Moonlander keyboard. So I'm gonna show you my configuration. This is a public configuration that's available. I can link that in the description of this video and you can install that on your Moonlander keyboard if you're interested in doing that. But I am gonna show you some of the things that I've really enjoyed and again, this is just so far what I have. I'm sure in the future, this will change. I'll add things, I'll remove things, I'll move some things around, but this is currently what I have so far in my for my Moonlander configuration. So as you can see, we have this um, right control, and this is what I was talking about before. So this is set up with a key code, and what I can do is I can, it's a dual function key, so when I hold, so again here, it actually talks about it, which is kind of neat. So tapping results in the keystroke specified in command. So this is the command. So when we tap it once, we get a slash. But then if we were to hold it, it would act like right control. So that's actually really useful when I'm using Vim because I can hold down that slash key, which is right control, and then I can do U or D to move up uh, rather than the standard MacBook keyboard where control is kind of at a, an awkward position with your left hand. Now it's moved to my right hand and it's really close to you. So that, that works quite well for me having it set up like that. Also, I have different layers set up, obviously. So in my symbol layer, I have this set up with the um, hard brackets here, the curly brackets and the parentheses. All of that is kind of right in that same row. So it helps me rem remember where everything is. And what I was doing before, since I have command here, I when I wanna move in VS Code between two 
different window panes, I can switch over to the second layer and I can do the uh, curly brackets. What I'd eventually, and I'll probably end up doing is um, setting up a momentary because this is a toggle currently. So when I hit this from the first layer, it toggles on this second layer until I press it again. So um, it's, it's not really a, it's a toggle and it's not a momentary switch. So what I'd like to do is probably set up something somewhere else. There's lots of other keys I can use here. I've got quite a few blank keys that I'm not even using right now just because either they're not reachable or just have no use for them yet. But I'll probably pick one of those and I'll set that up as a temporary so that when I'm holding it down, it switches over to this layer. But then when I let go, it switches back to the layer I was on previously. So. Um, so I might do that for something like this when I want to switch between layer panes in VS Code. While we're at it, I do have a lock Mac key. So I can press this and I'm actually using a macro, which is kind of neat. And I have this, um, so one button will lock my MacBook instead of having to do Command Control Q and hold down all those keys and find them and, and all that stuff. So I just hit this one key and it locks my MacBook, which is pretty neat. I recently um, had to set up a layer that was specifically for gaming. And so what this does is it actually moves uh, my important keys over to um, this other hand and it actually moves my space key. Oh, it looks like that's the only key I'm changing so far, but I have plans to add some other keys here, but um, it moves my space key um, over to my left hand so that I can use my mouse and my right. And I don't need that, the right half of my Moonlander keyboard. All right, thank you very much for watching that video. Um, I hope there were some helpful things in there. I know it was kind of short and it was really just a lot of stuff, but I was kind of just walking you through my general setup. What I'm going to do is I'm probably going to put up another video where I'll talk about working with the Chrome extension for Vim, just because this video got so long I didn't really have time to fit it in like I talked about in the introduction, but I'm hoping to create a different video and I'll show that off. So leave some comments if you'd be interested in seeing that. Otherwise, if you're not, then I can just post a link to that Chrome extension in the description of this video and you can just have a look at that for yourself. But if you're interested in me showcasing some of the things that I really enjoy about it, then definitely let me know in the comments and I'll be more than happy to create a video for that as well. Again, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope some of this was helpful. I know I said it wasn't really gonna be a tutorial, but it ended up kind of being a little bit of a brief introduction into Vim. We talked about some of the things that I actually enjoy using the most and some of the most important features to me. There are obviously a lot of other keyboard shortcuts that I use to get around my MacBook without having to touch my mouse, but those are probably some of the most important ones to me that I use on a daily basis. If you have others that you'd like to share, I'd love to hear about that in the description as well, so please let me know. But until then, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you in the next video.